Folks, we are back, and as we promised last week, we will be checking in with any number of parishes throughout the metro area. In fact, Warren Montgomery, the DA for St. Tammany Parish, joins us on the line. Warren, welcome to the show. Good morning, Newell, and I have to remind you that I'm also the DA for Washington Parish. I, if you remember the last time we spoke, we got in trouble. I because, am hard-headed uh, that way, Warren, and I apologize. <laughs> Just no, blame me. No, that's all right. That's all right. Both parishes. I don't, I don't want my folks in Washington Parish to feel that they're forgotten. So, Thank Warren, you for uh, not a problem. You're on the front line, obviously, as part of the first responder, law enforcement community. You're you're seeing a lot of different things. Obviously, uh, there are any number of issues that are going to end up coming your way. So what's going on over there? Well, this is a very serious situation. Uh, uh, but I think it's also true. I think Winston Churchill said back in the Second World War that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Well, that's, that's not exactly true, uh, I think, but, but what we do have to be careful of is that we don't panic. Uh, we need to be aware. We need to take all the precautions. But if we panic, we're going to make even greater mistakes. We're going to multiply our mistakes. And so uh, I think uh, given the difficult circumstances we're in, I think on the North Shore we're doing great, to be quite honest. I think considering everything, we're doing great. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, one of the things uh, that we implemented here at the DA's office when I came in five years ago was the decision to use technology to try to increase efficiencies and decrease cost. And I know you did that same thing when you were sheriff. Uh, let's use all our resources, and particularly let's use the technological revolution we've had over the last 20 years to try to do a better job. And so we did that, uh, and we have... The consequence of that is that we have uh, electronic access to our law enforcement files. We're communicating with them electronically. All of our ADAs had laptops, uh, and all of our investigators had electronic means of communication. And we've, we've made an effort to go paperless over the last five years. And we're not there. We're not completely paperless. But what happened then is when we had to go to this shelter in place, to this kind of lockdown operation, we've been able to do most of our work, maybe 80% of the work that we were doing anyway here at the office, we're able to do from home. Um, and that's been, that's been fantastic. Uh, re really what this has done is accelerated a process that was already underway uh, in, in the screening area, uh, in the uh, charge conference area, and I know those are technical words that you understand, maybe the public doesn't, but ways that, that we can continue to do our work so that when the courthouse reopens and we're back to our jury trials, we're going to hit the ground running. Warren, um, in the interim, um, obviously prescription con continues to run on a number of these cases. Uh, are there challenges there for you guys to keep cases um, alive and current? Well, the Supreme Court has suspended uh, many of the rules regarding uh, prescription. And uh, there, are, uh, there are a few challenges. But remember, you know, when the police is back in the day when you were sheriff, uh, you would make an arrest and uh, you would write up your reports and you'd submit them to the DA's office and we had between 60 and 90 days, or even longer, depending on whether or not the person was in custody, within which to bring charges. And so that, that part of the process of analyzing the police report, of gathering the evidence, of uh, determining what the proper charges are, that process is still going on. We're able to do that electronically uh, through, you know, different means, even our charging conferences where we examine these more difficult cases, the murders, the very serious cases, we're able to use technology such as Zoom and other uh, features to, uh, to meet with our law enforcement partners and, uh, and have those charging conferences and analyze the status of things. And so in that area, we really haven't slowed, we have, really haven't slowed down, Newell. Uh, and again, I think that you know, what, we're getting all our cases prepared, getting all the information uh, now, we're not able to, you know, we, what, what can't we do? Well, of course, we can't have jury trials uh, in the run of, And uh, if this goes past 90 days or 120 days, well, it's going to be, you know, we're going to start running into some 
more serious problems. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. And, again, I'm, my, my ADAs, my assistant district attorneys, their posture is we're going to have all our cases prepped. We're going to be ready to go so that when that courthouse opens for trials, uh, we're going to hit the ground running. Now, in the interim, if, if we have a case and we've gotten the discovery, the police report and the information, we turn that over to the defense attorney, we can take guilty pleas uh, now. And we have. We've taken some guilty pleas using electronic means so that uh, the person, let's say, is incarcerated and they plead guilty. And it may be that they get credit for time served and they're able to be released immediately or shortly after they plead guilty. So we're actually moving our dockets just not as quickly, uh, the, if you want to say that, we know the oil is not moving through the pipeline quite as quickly as it used to, but uh, we're going to be prepared so then when things clear up, we're going to move it quite quickly. Warren, what challenges do you see in, you know, the president is talking about practicing social distancing through the month of April. The governor is actually assessing the situation. It's incredibly fluid. It may be that we are going to have to still stay in place, stay at home, stay alive, um, possibly through the month of April as well. Uh, have y'all had any indication of uh, cases where people are just completely disregarding, violating all of the, um, this um, best advice that the experts are given? I, I call them, there's a new name going around, COVIDiots. Uh, have, y'all had, uh, have y'all had to arrest or deal with any COVIDiots uh, here lately? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I, I like that phrase. I have to say, I, I congratulate you, Newell. On your, Feel free to your use it. I, I got English it from language. someone else. I, I am not that creative. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we, I'm sure we have some covidiots uh, here on the North Shore. Uh, I'm not aware of any. I have to uh, compliment the, the citizenry here in the North Shore that uh, I don't think we, I don't think I've run into any any that uh, that have come to my attention. Uh, so I, I, that's, that's probably a better question for the sheriffs or our chiefs of police. Uh, but I, I haven't, I haven't, I'm sure they're out there. I haven't seen any. I would hope that, uh, that we don't have any of those folks and that everybody's doing what they need to do. Because if we do those things, the, the more we cooperate now, the more we respect those rules that are, uh, or those suggestions, and in some cases, I mean, enforceable laws, that our, our, our leaders are, are giving to us and mandating to us, the sooner we can get out of this. So I don't think we have a lot of COVID idiots over here. I certainly hope not. But if they are, I'm going to tell you what, you know, we are not going to play patsy with people who are going to endanger the public health and public safety of our community. Uh, and if you do that, uh, you're going to end up uh, quite possibly, uh, and I'm, I'm now I'm speaking for the judges because they're the ones who, who make the right. sentences, but don't be don't be surprised if you end up in that uh, hotel uh, called the parish prison. Yeah, Warren, um, we're talking to Warren Montgomery, the DA for St. Tammany and Washington parishes. I got it right that time, Warren. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better. But let me ask you this: a lot of people don't realize that you also serve a dual role. You serve as legal counsel for the Public Service District Hospital on the North Shore, and. Um, it's an important role, uh, one I'm sure that um, y- y'all are neck deep in, in request. H- how are things going from a health care perspective on the North Shore as well? Well, first, I'd like to, I'm glad you brought that up. And first, I want to thank, if anybody is in the health care profession, I just want to thank you for what you're doing. I know they're working overtime. You're working very hard. And I want you to know you have the support of the rest of the community for the sacrifices that you're making. And uh, they, they, if you see a nurse or a doctor or anyone else, uh, a medical technician, the folks, uh, give them a pat on the back. Give them some encouragement because they are the front lines, just like law enforcement under different circumstances is, is very much in the front lines. They're on the front lines of this fight, and they need our help and our encouragement. Uh, actually, uh, I gave up my representation of the hospitals oh, uh, sorry, after I, I was I elected. That. No, that's it. No, well, you know, you, there's no reason for you to know it. If you may recall that my predecessor uh, got into trouble over some payments that uh, he received from the hospital that uh, were alleged to be for private work, 
and uh, when in fact uh, he uh, was obligated to represent the hospitals. And so when I was elected, I decided that I didn't want that particular uh, portion of work because of the, the scandal that had been associated with it. And so the, the two hospitals, public hospitals, St. Tammany Parish Hospital and Slidell Memorial, uh, have their own private Council. Okay, so that they outsource it then. Okay, that's correct. Uh, that's did not, correct. Did not know that. Thought I could get a, a little insight as to what's going on there from uh, uh, someone who is uh, very measured and direct in their response. But nonetheless, uh, we thank you. Uh, final thoughts, Warren. Well, I uh, I want you to know that we're working very very hard over here, and I, I just I can't I just have to compliment my staff because this has been a somewhat of a sea change in the way we're doing business. You know, most um, yeah. 80%, 90% of my, of my coworkers are not here at the office. Uh, they're working from home and they're working hard and they're doing a good job for the public. And I appreciate their flexibility and their determination to do a good job under these circumstances. Uh, one of the things that, that we have been doing is uh, trying to move the jail population uh, as much as possible, as much as reasonable. Uh, and by move the jail population, that means if someone doesn't need to be in jail, let's get them out of, of the jail facility because of the risk at some point in time that there could be an outbreak of this COVID-19 uh, in the jail population. Uh, and I, I also want the public to know, though, it's, you know, it's a balancing act between public health and public safety, but we're not you know, we're not interested in any kind of mass release of right. people from our jails. Uh, we don't want the criminals out of prison and law-abiding citizens <laughs> imprisoned in their own homes. No, so no. we're doing a very targeted analysis case by case, but where it's possible to keep the citizenry safe, uh, the non-criminal citizenry safe, uh, and get people out of that prison so we reduce that that risk of infection in the jail, we're doing that. And I want people to understand that we're doing it on a case-by-case basis, on a selective basis, uh, but uh, our jail population now is probably the lowest here in St. Tammany in Washington, the lowest it's been in years. Uh, so we do have some empty beds at the jail, so please don't be a covid idiot and uh, go out there and cause problems. Well, it's interesting you say that. On the text line, is there a number to call to report covid idiots? Uh, they're uh, well, swimming in would... large groups and fishing at our <laughs> pond in our subdivision over in the Beetle Lakes, and they uh, want to know: uh, should they be calling nine one one? You can call nine one one. Call the sheriff's office. Uh, for that matter, uh, you can call my office eight zero nine eight three eight three, and we will get you in contact with the sheriff because uh, those covidiots should not be uh, risking the public health. And I'm sure the sheriff will look into it and make sure. Uh, that those people uh, fish uh, singly and not in large groups. All righty. Thank you so much, Warren Montgomery, the DA for St. Tammany and Washington Parishes. That's two in a row. I got it right. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and your insight. We truly appreciate it, and stay safe and stay healthy, my friend. Thank you. God bless, Newell, and thank you to your listeners. All righty. We'll be right back. 260 or text 870 Today is Doctor's Day. Reach out, send them an email, send them a text. Thank them for what they're doing. Uh, They're sacrificing a lot right now. Uh, They're putting themselves in harm's way in so many different ways, and we would love for them to know that we appreciate them. And you can do the nurses, too, and everyone that you know that's in the healthcare industry. Stay with us. We'll be right back.